Early on in my teaching experience, uh, our local AEYC was in a state of change and it became apparent that our AEYC was, was going to be dissolved if nobody stepped up to do some important work of reaffiliating uh, the, the whole chapter. And I, I was really lucky that I had mentors that cared so much about this and uh, they knew that in working together with the teachers it was going to be important to, to, to have us participate. This couldn't be something that they just did on their own. It, you know, it takes a collection of diverse minds to be able to save something important, to save something special. Uh, I was lucky enough to, to have the opportunity to work closely with my mentors at that, po at that part and we were able to save the, the AEYC affiliate before it was dissolved. It took a lot of work. It, I remember heading up to Sacramento with paperwork that needed to be signed and dated, and it was, we were on our last days, and, and if it didn't get in in time, we, this whole thing was going to fizzle out, but we never gave up hope. And I think that's important when you feel passionate and excited about a group of people staying together to do great work for our, our students and our community. Uh, you can't drop that ball and, and you have to feel inside you uh, what it's going to be to help out. Let me uh, turn that off. And One great way a teacher can get involved in the role of leadership in their community is by working with the local AEYC. Uh, which is also attached to the state AUIC and the National Association for the Education of Young Children. Uh, by working with the local affiliate at, in any way you can, you, there's a great chance to, to volunteer and make events and things happen for teachers. Uh, and this, that can mean conferences, that can mean educational opportunities, stuff like touring other people's centers. Um, the AYC was having uh, some big issues in our local region where nobody wanted to step up and take charge and it was it also happened to be that we were almost dissolved as a unit and I felt really charged with the idea that we have to keep this avenue of education alive and, and, and thriving for the teachers of our community and I was really excited about having that opportunity my mentors connected with me and we helped be a part of the group that drove to Sacramento as the deadline was passing and, and getting this paperwork signed and dated and, and, and approved. It, it took a lot of extra time and energy and involvement, but when you take that time, that's stepping up, that's doing your part, and hopefully you feel that your work is connected to that bigger part. Uh, and if, in time, you've been doing this long enough, I think you, you know that you can't do it all from your classroom. It, it takes going, stepping outside of your classroom to be able to help. And then I'll talk about okay. the toughest challenge I ever faced as a teacher was when my school was closing down. And we were told by our parent school, uh, we were part of a bigger K through 12 campus, I'm sorry, K through 8 campus, and we were told that this very successful preschool program that had been in operation for 32 years in our community was no longer viable. And wow, we were flabbergasted and lost by that, that thought. Um, I'll, start, I'll start again too. So what happened was we were, uh, the, the teachers and parents had to come together to find a plan. Uh, there was one idea, let's save this school, let's keep it going, and, and we'll be activists, we'll march to the other campus and tell them how important it is to save our school. And, and uh, the others of us, we didn't know what to do. And so, you know, we did successfully collaborate and we called for meetings and, and they got together with us at the other school, the leadership, the board of directors, and they said, if you teachers and parents really believe in what you're doing, why don't you make your own school and let us know how we can help? And at first that idea seemed so daunting and overwhelming to us. 
uh, after all, I, I was a teacher. I didn't want to take leadership in creating a new school. But with a lot of support, and, and that's where it came from, our parents and the staff that, that were remained committed to this idea, we were able to collectively try something that was way outside of our comfort zone, that did not feel uh, attainable to us. And I think back as we formed Coastal Community Preschool, that it took every one of us with our very specialized skill sets, even the teachers, to be able to make change happen and to create the framework for what was our school. And it was a lot of work to get that school off the ground. Many, many, many extra hours. But again, those who felt passionate had to step up. And so, you know, I reflect back on that story now, and I, I think about it all the time, that no matter how hard something ever seems to me in this work, I hope to start a school. So <laughs> that, that's a pretty big thing. And it, it, I've, for me, it's, it stands as my greatest accomplishment as, not as a teacher, but as a, a community organizer and a, in a more, more of a, um, you know, I see myself as a helper in all that, but really we were all leaders and that came together because we were able to harness all the important assets that everybody had to share. Without that, that school wouldn't have happened. Um, and, you know, my life has changed entirely because of it. I, I've been given every opportunity to become the teacher I am today. Uh, so, you know, what you give to eventually gives back to you also. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, all, the, all that extra work you might be called to, to put into a project, uh, you never know where it's going to take you and it always opens doors, always creates